Okay, now we're going to have a couple of examples of, you know, kind of using uh, logical equivalencies. And, or at least, you know, part off of a show and things are too logically equivalent. And so one would be, this is also kind of where we're going to get the three attendance problems. And so you'll have to pay attention to this particular lecture because I'll verbally state it. And say, for example, on the first, if I wanted to show that two things are logically equivalent, say, by a truth table. Um, let's pick one of the more classic ones that's, you know, kind of a little bit longer. Let's do, say, uh, the right-hand distribution for implication. So let's say that I had, let's not use P, Q, and C. Let's say I have square and a triangle implies a star. Yeah, just use those weird ball symbols. So if I would look at a particular thing, look at this, this particular thing, this should be logically equivalent to a square implies the star. And then uh, with the right-hand distribution, we flip uh, conjunction to disjunction, and then we get a triangle implies a star. So I'm not using PQ and R, I'm just being weird. So if we'd go through this, if I want to show by truth table, I want to show the left by conditional the right. And so we're going to have three simple objects, square, triangle, and star. And so they're true, 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 false, 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 false. So we have these eight possibilities. True, true, false, false, true, true, false, false. And then true, false, true, false, true, false, true, false. And then we're going to go through these. Let's generate the left-hand side first. And so we would do it inside out. So we'd worry about what's going through this. Um, we would have what is square and triangle. And after that, we would take what is square and triangle and imply star column. And that would be our left-hand side. And then to get to the right-hand side, we would have these two implications. What is square implies star? What is triangle implies star? And then finally, what is square implies star? Disjunctive triangle implies star. And then I'm going to cheat since I ran out of room here. I'm going to call, again, this is number one, this is number two. Actually, not use numbers. I'll call this uh, compound proposition one and compound proposition two. So compound proposition one by conditional with compound proposition two. And okay. So going through here under conjunction, if the square and the triangle, if both of them are true, it's true. Otherwise, if I ever have a false, it's false. So it's false, 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 because false dominates under and. Now I'm going to take this column here and imply star. And I know that false, all these falses, imply anything is always true. That's vacuous. So those those particular columns are easy. That's true, 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 true. The only time I have a problem is if, well, there's a true implies true. That's fine. True implies false. That's false. There's only one time under this entire implication. It's a contingency, but when it's true, true, false is the only time it's false. Every other time it's true. Okay, so that's the compound proposition one. Now we're going to take implication square implies star. So these are all falses, so no matter what, true, 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 because false implies anything. So true implies true is true. True implies false is bad, false. Back to true implies true, true, true implies false is false. Then I take this one and I go, well, what about star again? Anywhere there's a false, so it's triangle implies, so these four falses are true, true. Those are the vacuous. Now I look at it, true implies true is true. True implies false is false. And then true implies true is true. True implies false is false. And then I just simply take the or of these. Well, true dominates, so wherever there's a true, it's true. So the only time it's two falses is here. Everything else is true. 
and the biconditional is the check, do they have the same truth values? And so this is the uh, compound proposition one, this was compound proposition two, and I notice in the exact same cases are the exact same values. So it ends up that this is yes, a tautology. And so that's one. And so really when we look at this, and so we have that this is showing something by a table. So what I would like you to do for the attendance problem is this was the compound propositional, you know, that's showing that these, and so there are the yes, we're done, right? They are logically equivalent. What I would like you to do is for you is not to do the conjunctive version, which is what I did. I'd like you to do the right-hand side distribution. And so those two sides there would flip on that. And so that's one I want you to try for the first attendance problem is to simply use essentially the same thing, but I'm wanting you to turn that into an or, which would mean that this one is an and, and do essentially the same problem and, and, and have this sort of discussion in your head. Why do we have trues? Why do we have falses? What's going on as you do this problem? So, so that's one example as well as the attendance problem that I want you to try as you go through it. The second approach on this is to um, show that a proposition is logically equivalent to another one by discussion. And we can kind of go back to this problem here, and this would be, let's, if we would use number one, we could actually just, you know, again use this. We could use the above to show that, okay, that P and Q implies R is supposed to be logically the same as P implies R, Q implies R, but because it's on the right-hand side, it switches like this. And so what I'll focus on is under implication. So what I'll do is I'll discuss, I'll pick to discuss when false. And one of the questions is, you know, why am I doing that? It's because this is an imply. Imply is normally true except for the one condition. A true implies a false is the only time it's false. So that seems to be rare for us and that's when I'll, I'll, I'll work on this. And so again, if I call the left-hand side compound proposition one, compound proposition two, so CP1 is false only if true implies false, right? So that immediately tells us that, well, since this is P and Q, that's, that's the P and Q, and that's the R. So I'll already, I immediately know what R is. R is false, period. So if I look at this and I say, oh, look, this is only in false if R is false and P and Q is true. So P and Q is true and R is false. So I already know what R's value is. R is immediately false, period. That's the only time this will be false. On the other hand, when is a conjunction true? A conjunction is only true if both are true. So now we know that P is true and Q is true and R is false. So that's the only time that when this happens. So, well, what about B? CP2 is false. So this guy over here is false. Well, that's this is disjunction, right? And under disjunction, true dominates. And so the only way an or could be false is only when P implies R is false and Q implies R is false. Well, if I look at each of those, we could go through it and say, well, you know what? When's that true? Well, only when P implies R is false and Q implies R is false. But what's the only way for an implication to be false? The only way an implication to be false is if this is a true and this is a false. Well, what's the only way for this to be false? Uh, for that to be true and that to be false. And so what's happened? P is true. Q is true. R is false. So this is the same as part A. So, logically equivalent. 
same conditions. They're both false in the exact same conditions. And if they're not false, they're true. So they, they're true in the same conditions. We only have to focus on one of them. So that tells me for the second problem I want you to do on your attendance attempt for next class is, again, give me the same discussion uh, as what you saw here. But again, I don't want you to do this one. I want you to do... Wait a second, since I erased it, I can't remember three seconds. <laughs> this one instead. So I'd make that an or, which means that's an and. Do the exact same discussion, right, as what I just did, but focus on the flip side of the argument, the other, kind of like the partnered uh, logical equivalency of the right side distribution. Okay, and the third one, which again will also be your third attendance problem, is we can just simply use, say, you know, P implies Q laws to simplify. And so that would be something like, uh, let's say I wanted to take one of the more complicated laws or and use the more basics or a different part. So uh, let's take one that they ask, it's asked to do in the book. Propositional equivalencies. So how about... Let's say that we have, for example, let's say show that not P and P or Q implies Q is logically the same to true. So basically I want to show something's a tautology. So I want to do that entire thing and I get to this end process and I'm just going to show that it's true. So we start off at the beginning. Not P and P or Q needs to imply Q. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is say, I don't, these are ands and ors. I'm going to take care of this imply. I don't like implication. I could distribute, right? I could use distribution on the left, but normally what we usually want to go to like Kind of like when you do trig substitution, if you have tangents, make them sines and cosines. So try to go to ands and ors to see if it helps you. And so well, the first thing I'm going to do is implication is the same thing as the disjunctive form, which is not the first. So okay, so what did I use? I used the disjunctive form of implication. Uh, the next thing I'll do is I'll go ahead and take this negation and distribute it through. And so that is not, not p and become ors, and then that is not P or Q. Still have or Q, but that is logically not not, which is P or, I still have a not P or Q, and I have my or Q on that one. And then if I look at this, it's where I have an or, this under an or, that under an or, this under an or. I can use commutative and distributive and regroup it. So this is just simply P or Q. I'm going to put those two together because I can commute and then reassociate. Sorry, distributive, associative. Or, and I have not P or Q. And one of the other laws that we have is the negation laws, which is if you have something or not that thing, that's logically true. If you have something and not something, that's always false. And so these are the negation laws. Well, I have something that's not pretty looking as P or Q, and I have not P or Q. Well, this or not this is simply true. And so for each of these, I've used different laws. And so what I would like you to do for the attendance is just to say what I told you, which laws that I use. I'd like you to copy this, I mean, do this and understand it. I'd like you to tell me which laws were used as you went from line one to line two. So for example, from here to here, I used the disjunctive version of implication. From here to here, I used De Morgan's law. Uh, from here to here, I dropped those outer parentheses, so I just simply used the associative law because I only have implication. From here to here, I used commutative and dissociative. So I flipped these two around 
and then reassociated P or Q, because I can do that. And then the last thing I used was the negation law to show that if I have an object or I don't have that exact same object, it's just simply true. And so in the end, I'm not going to expect you on tests to be able to name all of these laws, but I would like you to be able to know what they are because they help you do it. And so this is the third type of thing we can do is we can simplify things. Maybe it becomes true. Maybe it becomes false. Maybe it becomes a simpler compound proposition, but we should be able to use the laws. And so if you notice, this looks like kind of like college algebra simplification. That's what we're doing. We're replacing things with what they are, a same object by using the laws. So for your attendance, I just want you to take this and then explain right beside it what law you what law was used as it went through it. And those are the three things I'd like you to do for next class. And these are just three examples.